Nisha Gai. Hi. Welcome to Punchin TV. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I kind of um, kind of nervous about it. It's okay. Just be natural. Alright. Cool. Punchin TV is all about natural. Alright. Um, for those who don't know, you're actually a singer. Yeah, singer songwriter. Singer songwriter. Recording artist. From Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. And they go to be exact. They go Martin. Mm hmm You've been singing for quite a while. Yeah. I've been singing since secondary school church days, but been pushed into it professionally when I was around twenty one. Um, life kinda took a turn. Homelessness and and all these things and it was the singing that helped me to stay afloat you know so it wasn't a lot I wouldn't lie people doubt me till today but I started singing for a hundred dollars an hour and um, I made it work um, for a long time I was earning next to nothing as people would have said as people would say no it was next to nothing but to me it meant a lot to earn to keep a roof over my head if I was renting a bedroom or something like that you know and um, I had to toughen up in order to get a little more and each and every time I did that I would ask for a little more sometime I would I would just stop singing and they would call and say Jay when they coming back well yeah I'll come back for a race but that that is how it was kind of negotiated. You couldn't just say, hey, can I have a race? You know, it didn't work that way in the music industry. When you're more or less like in the underground, it don't work that way. Hi, I'm applying for a race because there is no regulation or anything like that. So I had to play the game and play it smart after watching others play the game and play it smart. You know, so I had to stop singing for a while. And when they call, if they want you, they're gonna pay more for you and yeah since since 2003 to well now singing professionally but um you know you wouldn't really call it that until you're earning the the thousands and the hundreds of thousands because um in digital rising stars people wouldn't call me a professional but you, or they won, would you not, won that competition, right? I won that in 2014. I won the Digital Rising Stars in 2014. Did you expect to win? No. Because, <laughs> good. because I tried that competition four times. And each time I did, I think I got, I got in the TV the TV series the first the first time and then the second time I think I got booted out early. The third time Miss Glenda Collins she said to me, Oh Nisha, give somebody else a chance. And then the fourth <laughs> time and then the fourth time I tried, um, it was like a chance just like that because I'm at home and everybody's saying, girl, why don't you go? And I'm like, these people don't want me. It's clear. No matter how good you think you could sing, if they don't want you, they don't want you. And I'm like, Nisha, take the chance. Just go. You never know. Yeah. You never. And I'm like, here now, I know. I know. I cried. I've experienced it. I've been through it. I know. Why should I do it again? To come home and cry again? They say, Nisha, you have nothing to lose, really, you know. So me, with my little $60 in my pocket, because as I tell you, I was struggling. I took my $60, called somebody down the road, say, here, now you can drop me in movie town, please. And they were like, yeah. And when I reached home, movie town, I was the last auditioner. <laughs> Sitting down there watching like, what are you doing here? And everybody is vocalizing. Uh, 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 and I, I, they're like, what are you doing here? I say, you know what? You're going to go inside there and you're going to kill it. And whether you make it or not, you're going to leave an impression. And when it was my turn, I think I sang um, As We Lay. Um, I will never, never want to 
heard and people were standing who teacup was in the hand and end up on the ground who paper was in the hand and end up on the ground because they were in shock i mean i, I felt i play nice with all you like i singing all these sweet little subtle tunes and all you just hear man we don't want her but this time i want to catch all your attention so i let it out on them and they were like um do you want this call back card i said thank you and that was it but <laughs> i got kicked out yes i got kicked out like the the first round i got kicked out you did yep and when i got kicked out i came home and i cried as the hardest I ever cried i lied the second hardest I ever cried in my life and um i felt like there was no means of going forward because people who i've worked with over the years were calling me and saying the meanest of things I tell you, you shouldn't go there. Look, you're looking like a fool now. Look how to kick you out like a dog, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, the devil see you down and just try to kick you lower. Right. And I felt like the ground was just opening up to receive me with every kick. I took the kicks. I stayed here on this ground. I'm not lying. The ground we are on right now. I laid on this ground, on this cold ground, and I cried for days. And then um, a situation happened with my family that I, I wouldn't really give you details with, but it kicked me lower. And I said to myself, God, if this is what it is about, you know, you had to step in at some point in time. And I got a dream that I was in a hotel, um, at the top of the hotel. And there was a red phone in my hand. A digital phone. <laughs> Weird, right? Weird, right? Weird, right? But then there was an earthquake. The earth shook. And when I got downstairs, it, it looked like what's taking place now in 2020. 2021 as well. I got up from the dream and I understood that what I was focused on was way less um, important than what's happening in the world or what's about to happen. That's how I interpreted the dream then. So from that moment, I started to pray, Father God, forgive me. You know, because my short-sightedness kind of took me away from what mattered, which is praising God, right? So right after I said that prayer, asking God for forgiveness, I got an email saying, Hi, Nisha Guy, Ni Nicole Phipps from Hot Pepper. Um, something about wild card that's all i saw wild card and are you willing to accept and and i was like lord really so i took the wild card and i'm not gonna lie to you some people were like you should go here you should do this you should do that you should promote yourself and i did absolutely nothing nothing hear what i'm telling you nothing no thing i do nothing because normally you want to go and promote yourself in port of spain or put up something or whatever. I didn't lift a finger except sew my clothing, braid my hair, make sure I look good, go on stage. I had one shoe. And the shoe was so beaten. I had to sit with a needle and thread and stitch it. And I had gold spray and spray that shoe to make sure it looked shiny when I go on that stage. If people could look back at the videos, they will see one pair of shoes. Different dresses in a one pair of shoe. I ain't ashamed to say it. I know how to struggle, but I know how to struggle in style. So, <laughs> so when that happened and I was just doing my part, God did the rest. You know, he said that you, you do what you can and then stand up and, and watch me. Watch me. I'm God. I will do the rest. And so said, so done because I literally didn't have to lift a finger. I didn't have to go and promote a lie. I think I took a piece of paper with my cord. Or written on it in a sharpie and i stuck it in my hair and i walked about westby's for no reason and people were like oh my god there's a piece of paper in your hand like oh my god yes please vote for me and that was it one day that was it nothing else that's a great idea though it, well <laughs> I, I mean i don't think i would think about that but i had to do something you know and then after that day i didn't have to nothing else um i had one or two friends with me and they took the whole banner thing to another level because they didn't even know whether I won or not. 
However, they had a banner saying congratulations on winning. You understand me? So they took it to another level. But to say that I went around campaigning and stuff, I really didn't. I didn't. So the other contestants, Ooh. when they see you, they saw you came back. Mm-hmm. Now, oh my God. <laughs> so they, okay, okay. This is a ticklish story. Because upon being offered the wild card, I, I had to keep it confidential. So people like Felicia Shakir Roberts, she and I were really close. I mean, sit down and share pizza close. And um, she, she called me, I think it was twice the day before, and asked me something about the song. And it's bubbling within me to say, girl, I get it wild card, I get it. But I can't, I couldn't. So when it was practice session by Joey Ning White Studios, Image and Company Studios, and um, I walked in, everybody was like this. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't tell them anything, but I had to I had to show up. And when I got there, I was like, yeah, I got the wild card. You know, that kind of way. But yeah, it, I can't say that they was happy with me afterwards, you know, because of that. I cannot say that. Anyhow, you take it. The show had to go on. So, but um, I don't think they were very happy with me. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you said... You didn't <clears throat> think that you would have won? No. Who you thought would have won? Anastasia Richardson. Now, and I'm not saying this to say that I see myself as less. Remember, I've been... um, What's the word? I've been, oh gosh, auditioning for this competition. And they always chose someone who looked different than I. If I could simply put it like that. But my image isn't what they seemed to look out for, especially in a female performer. They would look for something, you know, more to their liking. So um, apparently in this rounds, it pissed off the judges when I got kicked out. So I was told by the horse's mouth himself, one of the judges, he had a thing in his hair, I don't think I could call his name. I was told that they stormed out. Even though they were under contract, they stormed out. And they, they said, they mentioned this to me and others, that when they kicked me out of the competition, they were very angry because they said that there wasn't anybody who sounded like me. And so the judges, the judges stormed out. Liked you. The judges loved me. Um, Nadia Batson. Hey. That woman, she knows my story more than anybody else. And I didn't know that she knew as much as she does. You know? So when she saw me get kicked out, it really it hit her, it hit her spot. She didn't take it too too nicely. But then the, the other guy, <clears throat> the other judge, he's not the kind to say, I don't like this, I'm not taking this, I'm walking away. He's the type to rest the adverbs and the proverbs and all the verbs on them and bounce and then they were like okay but you could tell that it it made others uncomfortable because while in the competition and this is stuff that you all don't know during the competition somebody emailed the Jessel Rising Stars saying that I'm a professional and I have no right being in the competition so there's a gentleman called Michael. He walked up towards all of the performers. And he sat in front of me. And if I can mock him, allow me, there is an email. And the, the email says that Nisha Guy is a professional and she has no reason to be in this competition. Nisha, are you a professional? Um, Nisha, let me rephrase this. Do you earn $30,000? Do you hop a plane? And go to somewhere and run US and return to Trinidad and Tobago as a happy effing singer. No. Good. Nisha's in the competition. Effing deal with it. And he walked away. And everybody except one person, <clears throat> whose name I won't call, was sitting in the corner quietly, looking like the guilty, you know. And we were all in astonishment because. You know, somebody would go that far. 
But um, <clears throat> I really didn't think that I would be the one to have won the competition, basically because everything, most of the attention, most of the accolades, um, most of the highlights and the, the shine and everything was going towards that person. Even the visits from the company was going towards that person. I'm really looking on like, dang, it's so loud for real. No, it's not. But um, it looked that way. It looked that way. And I think um, the night in particular, I just said, you know what, Lord, if this is... I was looking at the ceiling. Lord, if this is what it is, fine. But I'm telling you, I'm not happy. I'm really not happy because, you know, I really want... I mean, this is me talking to God on stage. They're talking, talking, talking. And I have my own conversation. And my eyes roll up in my head. Lord... You know your child not happy and da, 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 da. so when they actually said and the winner is Nisha Guy, I literally almost calcate on the people's stage. They had to hold me up because I'm standing there in complete disbelief. Not saying that I think of myself as less, but it's 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 something to do with understanding how people think after being told over and over so then you create a mold okay this is as far as their mentality would go you can't try to break them into another norm this is how they think and this is what you should expect from them and that's it you understand what i'm saying so i really didn't expect to win mm -mm. so you went on to win <laughs> how was your career since after winning the competition so the year 2015 would be my reigning year and i had a commitment a year-long commitment with digicel also is something like winning uh, miss universe or something like that you have to be committed to certain things for a certain point, period of time for a year so it's for a year you yes. have to be committed and there are things about that contract that i can't say because it's confidential and Till perpetuity is the word. Till forever. <laughs> and um, so I had to fulfill that. So even though I'm here building my dreams, reaching for my goals, I can't leave. I can't leave the country. Oh. Because I won't be available to them. And there are penalties involved. That is Digicel itself, right? Yeah. But Digicel is not from Trinidad. Well, I, the artist who won that year, had to stay and be available. For what exactly? Well, as I said, I had a commitment to them. Mm -hmm. So I had to, whatever they need, whatever they needed. So I had to do some performances or whatever. Whenever they called, I had to be available. So there isn't like a, a fixed schedule to say, okay, well, I have nothing between here and here. Let me go somewhere and try to make a name for myself and come back. You know, beat the iron while it hurt. I couldn't do that. And this is not me complaining. This is me stating facts. Right. right? So, that to me was a downer. And then, that year in particular, I was hoping to get the added push in advertising. You know, normally they put up a, a nice little banner of the billboard, winner. Billboard. billboard. I was looking for my billboard. I never got one. Yeah. And... Um, I also, <laughs> I also went on to produce my song because I got a, a production from the same judge with the thing in his head. And um, I did the song and it turned out beautiful. It was my original song from any competition. It's the first time Digital Rising Stars ever did an original segment. And my song hit, thank God. But... Um, When I reached in the studio and I said, this is the way I wanted it, I didn't get it the way I wanted it. I got it the way he wanted it. And because people were already attached to how it was sung in the show and the music behind it and everything like that, they rejected the new song because they were already stuck on the, you understand me? So it was difficult there. But then... Um, I still try to market everything for myself because they don't really assist you with that. You are on your own after you win. Right? That's cool. 
it's cool. Let's be positive, right? So um, I went on to try to promote, call people, you know, try to get my song out. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. One painful part in recording, investing in music, is having to deal with the song man, the producer, in the radio station, the DJs, the MCs. Some of them are really courteous, really beautiful souls. And they play the song and hype it up and that's it. Because remember, they're, they're, it's a business. And on one or two occasions, I witnessed my song in hand and then in a dustbin. Now, you think about your investment and think about the work you put into it and then to see that being thrown away, it really broke my heart because we are quick to grab up everything from everywhere. And I'm not bashing anybody about telling all in my experience. We are quick to pick up everything from anywhere. But when it comes to our own, we treat each other like crap. And for the local music industry, it'll be hard to thrive if it is that we can't even find value in our own. And that hurts. Because here we are trying to build a name for ourselves in music globally because for some reason we tell ourselves that this is where music is and there's nothing else but if we continue to think that way we are going to continue to be overlooked on the global stage so while we're trying to fighting to lift our name we have producers and mcs and song men just taking it their stuff and throwing it away ah she's so good and it's a bad song you know throw it away there's some kind of clique system. I'm not even trying to get involved in that. Throw it away. You know, because they're not in your clique. So there's not a big picture. It's a lot of small-mindedness. And I, I really can't focus on us anymore because it hurts. I can't see just in front of me. I can't see me walking up in 98.1 studio and my song getting thrown away after I listening to 98.1 for years. You know, that's the first place I went to because why I'm really anxious. It's an inspirational song. This is the deal thing. The man looked at it and threw it away. So after that, I said, you know, Nisha, don't beat up too much. Go and record another song and see what happens. When I went to the studio and I had the producer my money, the producer went to a, cast, a casino of some kind. Spent my money and never had time to record my song. When I asked him back for it, he tried to claim my lyrics. He tried to claim my whole $10,000. He tried to dis defame my character. And with that, I said, Nisha, if you continue like this, something will go wrong. Take a pause, catch yourself, and go again. Okay, so you... Sorry to cut you, but... Go ahead. You paid $10,000. Go ahead. To do one song. Go ahead. And he did not want to do the song. And he did not want to refund me my, my $10,000. Didn't you find it was a bit expensive? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. But um, at the same time, when you go to... Huh, when you go to some of these studios... When I go to some of these studios... And they look at me. They don't look at me like something they want to brush. So then they want to give me whatever and do whatever and whatever and whatever and whatever. And then hand me and say, okay, well, I will you pay for. So you go to somebody and you tell yourself, you know, this person has a certain standard, a reputation. And at the end of the day, I'm going to get the product that I am paying for. I didn't get that. On top of that, they didn't want to do the second song. So when it is that I realize this is what it's about, I say, stop, take a breed, go again, but just no, no, catch yourself because people fail to understand something. They, they, I, I heard that I won $2 million. I won 
and I'm grateful for every cent because we voted out thousands of dollars before I won. You were telling you. So when I won, it was raining on other people. <laughs> I was just giving, just paying bills. You know what I mean? Because I didn't understand. I didn't believe that I would have won. I said, Nisha, even if you get second place, thank God. Third place, thank God. You could at least pay them, pay them off and eat a food. Whatever. You understand what I'm saying? But I didn't think I would have won. So it's at the last, last day. A gentleman looked at me and he said, you know, you won the heart of the country. And that's a gentleman who's affiliated with the Just Arise of Death. You know, you won the heart of the country. I'm like, what? You won the heart of the country. You got the most votes. Is somebody telling me this before I have some... What? That, that means I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to. But I'm so used to what was. And actually it was my mother. She's like, I ain't taking no chance. I ain't taking no chance. Sir. Send money. And she send me money. And as she send me money, and she take loan and she send money. And she take loan and send money. And as she do that, I just write and know, okay, I owe this done in the Lord Jesus. I owe this done in the Lord. Right? Voted out. We voted out every cent and waited. So when I won, it was to pay off a lot of bills. But then there's another thing that people don't know. God, I'm talking too much. Um, no, you're not. <laughs> so in, in 20, 2010, I was gunning so hard behind music. And my father called me and said, Nisha, don't, you're not thinking about marriage and children and these things. I'm like, Daddy, I don't have my mind right now. You know, I was single and in the papers, radio, all kind of thing. I, I live in. And Daddy was like, Nish, I think he told me something like, by the time you're ready to have a child, you're going to need the, um, the WD-40 factory or something. So he told me, right? And I'm like, but Daddy, you got that cool. You know, but... That's my father, he just kicks about them thing and then I say no Nisha, you really don't give nobody the time of day. No, you really you don't. I really don't. Once I'm focused on something, nothing can interrupt me. So it's like I say, alright, you know what? You're gonna try this. You're gonna try the relationship thing and whatever. So I shifted my focus. And then I had I had an an arrangement with a manager. And the manager wasn't doing me good at all. He was more or less eating a food off of him. So when it is that he shifted his focus and I shifted my focus, it was as though we abandoned music completely because now I'm looking for man, literally, right? And he, I think he was doing some project with H2O Flow and two girls and some stories or whatever, but... It was as though I didn't exist anymore, and I'm like, niche girl, try. See what, see what this dating thing is about, you know? So I got into a relationship, and the relationship was going really good. And um, I got pregnant. I was 28 at this time, right? At the age of 28. I got pregnant. Shocker to me because the doctors were, tell were telling me, you have PCOS, you won't get pregnant or whatever like that. And in the heat of the moment... Fire struck, <laughs> and I became pregnant. So, um, I remember being in the hospital, and the doctor said to me, "I'd have to abort the pregnancy." But as he said it, tall white guy, as he said it, another doctor pulled him out of the room. No one ever said why. I got discharged asking questions. No one ever said why. When it is that he said that, it scared me because imagine being told you will never get pregnant and then I'm pregnant now. Abortion is the furthest thing from my mind. You know what I mean? So I went to the clinic or whatever like that and they just checked me up like normal because remember I told you they pulled him out of the room and no one really gave me any direction or whatever like that. I just go to the clinic, whatever normal stuff but then it got to a point where i got so ill where i couldn't move and when i was seven months pregnant i took in with seizures let's say you have nothing wrong with your body 
but the pregnancy now is bringing you on high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and whatever else, but it's as though it's adding pressure on you and the baby. It's fatal. And if you don't get the levels down, it goes from preeclampsia to eclampsia. Eclampsia is when the baby ain't make it, right? So, um, again, I'm being told this. I'm laying in the hospital there to try to keep the, the baby's heartbeat and everything. And I'm not going to be sent out of the hospital without my baby. However, this one doctor decided that I was there too long. She was not in my team of doctors who were working on me and baby. And she decided to kick me out. This is Portis being general. And I'm there begging for my child's life. She said, Miss Guy, I'm sorry, but it's not a hotel. We have other patients who need beds. Like, you know, I'm just lounging away. Um, I said, Doc, you know, I should be home nesting, you know, putting together a crib and stuff like that. You could say something like that. And she says to me, Miss Guy, you need to leave. I can tell you her name now, but I don't want to start a court case. And with that, I took a bag of steroids because I had to inject myself with it to help baby develop and walked out of the hospital. Um, on nine months on the dot, Friday the 25th of November was the due date. And while I'm walking in the elevator, something something happened i can't put my finger on it but i know something was wrong so between the elevator and the floor maternal floor maternity floor um i told the nurse i said something is wrong so they put me in the the front of the line to do the ultrasound and when i did the ultrasound for about a whole hour they were inside and they're trying to find a heartbeat and they didn't find one because the baby had passed on eclampsia set in and um locked me in a room and and kept me in the hospital for four days with the baby inside of me and he's already gone so I'm having blood poisoning heart problems breathing problems I couldn't move I couldn't do everything that a normal person could do and what people don't understand is that after after my son had died, um, as a matter of fact, I delivered him the, the Monday after, the Monday, I think, something, somewhere there. And um, I had to deliver him normal because they would not cut me. 209 over 119 was the blood pressure. They couldn't cut me. So they left me for dead. The whole situation would have been one where they would have had to answer too much questions fill out too much forms, write up too much, and they weren't willing to go through that. So they put me in a corner without any hookups, anything. I'm left there for dead. And I called for God, and eventually uh, a lady came. I don't know if she was a midwife or something, but she was the one who injected me with adrenaline in my thighs, and she called another person. The woman got kicking to head all kind of thing. And assisted me in delivering my son who was dead for how long people don't understand because I never spoke about it in detail like this you know because every time I attempted to I would be drenched in tears but it did a number on my body that up to today I'm still fighting a lot of it but when I won the Digital Rising Stars, it was an opportunity for me to help fix some of those things. I spent a massive amount of money doing blood work because my body would seize up completely after that for years. It took me a year and a half before I could walk properly. I mean, I used to be like up, but I have to hold on to something to get me from one point to the next. I didn't have no physiotherapy. I didn't have no mother or father here to help me. It was just me and God. I ended the relationship with the guy because I believed he should have been more of a man in everything. There were some issues, and of course there are issues in every relationship, but there were some issues that a young woman should not tolerate. And I didn't want to deal with that and deal with me healing. So 
when it is that I got home from the hospital, I broke it off. But as soon as I want, as soon as I won the Digital Rising Stars, man, I found doctors. I found doctors to help me. One doctor said I had to do surgery because I got a, an umbilical hernia when trying to deliver a stillborn. Um, it's a lot. It's a whole lot. And I can't even tell you all here. But what I can tell you is that today when I say I have a surgery to do and I'm judged for whatever reason, or she just went $2 million, or she had money, where all she money go, and all them things, it, 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 it just says to me, people don't know niche. So you can't be angry with them. You know what I mean? But I know I did my best when my health is concerned after that situation. I've never tried to have children again. <laughs> it's not something that anybody could ask me to do if you understand what I'm saying. But I've been working on my creativity as a musician and working on, on my health at the same time. I'm still trying to face the world because even though I feel broken physically, I still have dreams. Before you go on, I just want to say condolences. You know, um, believe it or not, I can relate. Really? Yeah, I, I had a daughter that died two days old. So, <sighs> I can relate. So this, oh, good <laughs> this obviously is a, was a good reason why you had a pause in your musical career. Definitely. Um, COVID. Oh, sweet Jesus. Did COVID have the same effect in, in terms of pausing your musical career? COVID did worse because at least... When I paused, I had options. Meaning that when I paused back then, I had about one or two jobs on the side, you know what I mean? Things that I would I'd do like, I think, secretarial something, reception something. Something going on where I could draw an income. However, COVID caught me waiting for my results from ABE because I went to um, pursue my bachelor's in business management, excuse, in 2019. As soon as 2019 hit, I was like, hey, you see the CXC thing? You had to up your game. You understand? So I went and took my pennies. God knows. Thank you to CETAL because many, many a times I had to say, the payment coming up in the class, you understand? But they stood by me. So thank you to CETAL. Many a times I had to face that, but I went... And I, I got my, my diploma so far. I'm still going for my bachelor's, you know. But at least when I paused singing back then, I had options. However, this time, I'm caught with my pants down. Because since 2018, I've been looking for a job. And this is where Digital Rising starts as a blessing and a curse. I can't say a curse really, but I think you understand what I mean. Because people... Imagine I go on an interview. I'm being called for the interview. I arrive at the interview early, everything on time. I'm there. Only to be told, but I can't hire you, your Nisha guy. Mom, didn't you call me asking me for an interview? Yes, but I just didn't believe it was you. Mom, do you? Do you? Mom. So um, because... Is you are Nisha guy because I'm, you are. Uh, I'm a superstar apparently because I I'm not supposed to work. I'm not supposed to earn. Look um, look she she looking for work. She money done or something like that. Whether you have money or not, you can't earn. You understand? So it happened a couple times, and I still kept pushing, because um I don't know. Some people will think, you know, this pride thing, well, I'm a digital rising star, so I don't need to work. You see that nonsense? At the end of the day, $250,000 cannot hold you out in life. It could well, give you a good start. To me, it how, could how, give how, you a good how, start. How are you looking at? But you could still uh, look, 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 wait, 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 no, wait. How are you looking at it, right? Uh -huh. 
the interviewer and the interviewer's kiss. Yeah, yeah. To me, it it she, she sounds like a fan. She, yeah, she she is a fan, <laughs> but <gasps> I I believe that people like her mm. won't expect you to be looking for a job. I don't understand that. I am just a normal M- person. Maybe it's because of the level that they see me of your singing. Oh, oh. so probably they believe that I shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here. I understand that then. But it still hurts. I think so too. <laughs> it still hurts. Wait, you think so too? You think yes, like I do. Good Lord. Because if it is you win the Giselle Rising Star, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, other people want it. Right. But the impact that you had on the country. What are you gonna in- you gonna right. enlighten me now because I didn't know the Please, no. please right, enlighten for me. me. I, I'll speak for myself. Okay, right? thank you. Thank you, Punchin. The first time I heard you sing, I I couldn't believe that is the level you're singing at. And the first thing I just ask when I hear somebody that talented is why she is not abroad or working with people abroad. Because obviously your level is too high for this country. And probably that's the reason why some singers who could sing at your level or higher, they leave. So probably other people think the same way. Or other fans. You know? So that is just my perspective. I speak for myself. But I probably what other people just think as well. So... There's a backstory to that. And I'm going to ruffle some feathers. But if you put enough salt in a pot, it's going to get salty, right? Salt is the hardest thing to get out of a pot of food, right? Some people like salt in their food. No, nah, but not too much. <laughs> That's <laughs> they, a pinch. Yeah, they want to cut the navel string. But if you put... A pong of salt in a pong of rice of pilau, it's going to be too much. A pong too much. A pong <laughs> too much, exactly. And the things you say to children matters. Because that root that you are placing in that child is very hard to remove. It's only in 20, 2017. When I understood exactly what I hold. Only in 2017. Only in 2017 I understood that I'm not what people said I was. That I'm not who they said I am. That I'm not what they described me as. That I'm more. Oh, so you didn't believe in yourself? I couldn't because my environment didn't didn't show me that I was anything worth believing in. I can tell you a lot in a punch. Eh? Do you have friends who used to actually tell you how good you are? Uh, how to put it? Yes, but... Hmm. It's a matter of where you hold people. Because if my mother says no, but my friends say yes, I will believe my mother. Right. So you wanted to hear it. The same thing from your friends. You wanted to hear it. Not wanted, but needed. Needed to, yes. And uh, I don't think I... I'm not, not just from my mother talking about... I'm not talking about my mother in particular. Speaking in general. Because my environment... If I tell you I've lived in more than 25 places in my entire life and not all situations were ideal for a child you understand and in many cases being told and being shown something is what stays in a child so if you feel unloved or unwanted by those who 
should love you and want you the most, you're going to feel like nothing. And I grew feeling like nothing. But even though I grew feeling like nothing, yeah, the sun is a, is a mind thing. Even though I grew feeling like nothing, I feel like not worthy of the best. I feel like not what I tell her I was singing for $100 a night while others were singing for 500 and up. And I felt like I was getting good or I was being treated well when I was not. I was shown by a lot of people who I loved that I wasn't worth love. You understand me? So, a lot of times I hear, you know, he says, she says, hey, Nisha needs to forgive because I pull myself to myself. But I pull myself to be away from nobody, you know. I pull myself to protect my head and my mental space because I knew how hard it was for me to reach a point where I can look in the mirror and say I love myself. So now it is very rare for me to have people around me because I don't want anybody to even try to plant the seed that I am less than. I had to work hard praying day and night for God to show me and God refused to show me. I had to trust him and believe him when he said that I am worth it. That I am worth love. That I am worth respect. And if anybody decides to give me less than, I will remove myself. I am making no noise. I am not making you change you. You have to want to respect me because. But if you don't want to do that. If you don't see it as, as important. To show me that I'm worth that. I'm not going to stress you anything. I'll just remove myself. So me not being around people. And here in your niche. You don't even go and look for. And think, think, think. It's not because I'm, I'm hateful. Or I'm unforgiving. I just know the work that I had to put in. To heal myself. And if people only understand. The amount of lines that I had to write. I am human. I am worthy of love. I'm a child of God. Jesus loves me. If people only know. And I don't know why I'm crying now. Because where I am right now. I feel really secure. But at the same time. To have to say this. Is hurtful. Because nobody should have to go through. I agree. You understand? So. In hearing. Certain things. Or being shown certain things. By the people you love. It really. Does make a deep impact. In who you become. You have to fight. You really have to fight. To be who you want to be. Above all of that. I remember Maya Angelou saying. How she was told she was ugly. Maya Angelou. Beautiful black woman. Dancing on Broadway. And, and, and expressing herself artistically. And she was told she was ugly. A couple of days before she died. She was on Oprah TV. Crying and saying, Jesus loved me. It mattered to her to, to know that she deserved that love. But even at that age, even at that age. So imagine how many times she heard that she wasn't worthy of. So people don't understand that the words they say and the things they do, how it hurts. And me pulling away from people is not because I, I stush. I yeah, stush. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not because I stush or something like that. I just need to protect my mental space with everything in me. That's it. But just to let you know, mm. there are people who respect you <laughs> as a person and a vocalist. Because <sighs> recently, around the Christmas season, you, you posted a, a video singing in Westmore. Oh, Lord. Yes. All right. And <laughs> I sent it to a couple of people mm -hmm. and I told them I'm going to try to get an interview with you. And the person was like, one of the person was like, who is she? Wow. And I was like, she won the g Rising Star already. And they was like, really? Okay. And they went and researched and they saw videos of <laughs> singing and they couldn't believe what they heard. So, 
just keep in mind that every day you're gaining one new person. That's good. That cares. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I um I held myself back because of self confidence issues, and in I think the day the day that I got kicked out from home, um I went to audition. I photo king in Port of Spain. I'll never forget that because they have the cruise ship auditions down there. And when I went there, every time I went there, he would turn me away because I was I was smaller, but I was still thick. And um, that's before the pregnancy and all these things. I think I was 25. No, I lie. I was 21, 22, 21. Yeah, I was thick. But I was thick in the right places. Yeah, man. Anyways, so <laughs> um, he just, no, 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 not you. But then some musicians were there. And when they saw the way he treated me, they said, why? Why? Did you hear? Have you heard us sing? And he said, no, I don't need to hear her sing. And they said, well, you're wrong. And then they asked me to sing, um, I'm so excited. So imagine me in City Gate back then, busting out, I'm so excited. The whole place was dancing, you know. And then they were like, give me your documents and ting, ting, ting. But I just got kicked out from home. So I didn't have anything, no documents, nothing to give anybody. Now I have to go and look for a job. Now I have to go and look for somewhere to live. You know, um, the hardest part in everything, looking back, is to see those who mistreated you, you know, the way they behave when you have. Because when you're not worth anything to anyone, nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's not something I put what in my mouth. It's what it is. What it is. Nobody cares. That's human beings for you. I didn't know. I didn't know. I was really naive. To it. I love everybody despite what. You know that kind of way? But when in the digital writing starts show me the truth of human beings. Oh my God. I don't know how I ain't turn a hater yet. You know what I mean? But it really taught me a lot about people. There's something I just always tell myself that I've noticed since I was a young teenager. When you, when someone has a lot, that's when the more fake people just come around. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> if Nadia Batson see this, if she go she go Paul, oh Lord. And I, and I don't mean if you're born in money or that, no, no. like if it is, you know, you're, money you're, happens. You're middle class and you know, you happen to probably Come win some so, money, mm. you get a good job, mm -hmm. you buy a car. Mm -hmm. That is when flood, flock, tsunami. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a reality in my life. I had to face that, but forgiveness. Forgiveness. Excuse me. Forgiveness. Once, that is once you make that important. Step. Once you make that step. <laughs> it's important. Forgiveness is important. Yeah. I, I've, I've had to confront some people for lies. Mm -hmm. Saying how I owe them money. I've had to confront some people for some kind of thing, but... I'm not, I'm not the I'm not the back and all type, but I'm still not afraid to tell you you're wrong. You're off. Check yourself. Don't make my brain down Jesus on your tail. I could go down on my knees and pray. You know what I mean? I have no problem going down on my knees and say, Lord, this person but ain't me. <laughs> you understand me? So I had to confront a couple people and let them know. Let them set them straight. Family even. But <laughs> I mean, you could choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. Oh, so Jesus. there's some things that really cannot change, you know. Ooh, but but, I, but I, it's okay. <laughs> I try to hold my tongue. Yeah, I try to hold my it's, tongue. It's okay. It's I try okay. to hold my tongue. I try. I got grinding on the chair just to mm. stay quiet because it's a lot. It's a lot. Speaking about a lot. 
you sew. Oh yeah. So it's not it's not <laughs> you really see what that? <laughs> it's not really singing is not really only talent. No. You could sew. Yes. And what you're wearing right now. Yes. You, you made it. Yes, this is one of my pieces as well. So what had happened was I grew up among a lot of women for some reason they always had a sewing machine. So the idea of me growing up without a sewing machine was a dread problem, right? But um, in 2014, before Digital Rising Stars, I went and I got me a nice little brother. And I started to whip up old pieces of clothing, cut the edging and the stitchings off, lay it on new cloth, Use the old clothing as patterns. Make new clothing out of that. Seriously. I started there. Then eventually I said, you know, I like this design at top. Let me go and find the pattern. Take the pattern. Lay it down. Whatever. And make it. But I was doing it for me. Because I can't handle going in a shop to buy a dress. And half my back outside. And I have some Michelin. The cute, but it's still Michelin, right? So, so I can handle that. I like when I am dressed, I feel dressed. You know, if I want to be sexy, it's something else. That's, and the road shouldn't be seeing what I don't want them to see. You know, so it's like, I said, Nisha, you're not going, you're not going down the road on no sister. No, you have more class than that. Okay, good. This is what you want. But when they go and they look for that top, it's talking at $600. I'm like, what, 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 what? <laughs> no, no. So I go by your fees. I had a shout out your fees. They treat me good. I go by your fees. So I go by the one on Queen and something she done for us. Then I go by different clothes stores, but I, your fees right there in St. James, I go. And I would pick up something, some nice pretty clothes. I found this piece. I love this piece bad. It was the last piece. And I make what I want, right? But then when people see it, they want to take it off my back. So um, <laughs> in that case, I'll be like, hey, send me uh, your statistics and... You know, I, I always tell people, try and buy a measure and tip and pay down. So when I call you, you know, you have your whoever measure you, send me what I want, I make it, whip it up, exchange funds, go. Um, But I wanted to do a line, a personal line, a line, you know, with whatever I make to, <clears throat> to supply my sisters now. You understand? Because being plus size is not easy when I can't find the clothes to look cute. So, um... It didn't work out, but it didn't stop me from sewing my clothing anyway. So yes, I clothed myself and anybody else, if you're ready, holla, holla, holla. Other than sewing, uh -huh. you do vocal coaching. I do vocal coaching as well. Um, I started in 2009. For some, pe for some people, they think that after a month, they're supposed to sound like me or Usher Raymond. You understand? So... It kind of dis discouraged me for a little while. Um, I started back again in 2016 or 17. Um, I stopped again and then 2020 hit. It's 2020 hit now. I can't really go out there to sing to make money. But um, I say, you know what, Nish? I know you don't feel too good about the vocal coaching, you know. But you have something. Plus it online. You can't go wrong. I tried, you know, getting um one or two locations in Digo Martin, and it was just a, a run around. A run around. The um the gentleman who who runs the stadium right on the road completely ignored me, and then it hit me. But Nisha, you don't need it. You don't. You have everything that you need right here. So I sent out the graphics, and I got a good response. Thank God. I'm just, you know, opening the, the, the vocal babies. Um, I have a couple of them, but right now they are outside of Trinidad. For some reason, it resonated more in foreign than in Trini. Um, and their schedule, as you know, their time is different from mine. So it'll be more in the afternoon time. So I have the morning. I have the morning open for now because the afternoon time, they go into school or whatever. So I have to accommodate them and their timing but um it's actually a lot better now i found a new joy in it 
because singing kind of changed. You know, back then, we were expecting it to be a lot more melodic, melodic you know, more flowy. But now there is a, a lot more uh, like a punch to singing. And then some of them, they're even asking if I could help them rap like Future. I don't know if you ever heard Future rap, but it's really staccato-ish kind of, kind, of, kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's a change. It's different. It's not as... It's not as serious as it was a long time. Yes, you want to sound good. Yes, you want to be your best. But they don't want to sound like Patti LaBelle. They don't want to hold out notes like Regina Bell. They don't want to <laughs> scream. They don't want to scream like Mariah. They want to just sound good. They want to find their own niche. They want to find their own self. So that is a plus to me. Where teaching them how to sing and helping them to find their voice is concerned. So what do you think about oh Lord. the local music industry? Please don't tell my about the Zessin story. I go, t listen, listen. She need bad music. I can't, I can't bash them if that's what I'm making the money, but that to me is not music. Listen, listen, uh, listen, let me be fair. Let me be fair. I cannot say that I like, what's his name? Dexter Dabs. Right? I can't say I support him, Dexter Dabs. Right? And can't support Bubbles and and what's his name? Scarface or what? <laughs> Either way, I can't deal. It's not my it's not my thing, you know. Um, to be honest with you, one song caught me off guard, and I think I heard the the censored version. And I heard this song, XO XO. My love is very special if you want and it to get. And I, I did a song for Hey, hey. So I sit down in a taxi. And I know the taxi driver. The taxi driver know me. He said, I thought you don't like Vibes Cartel. <laughs> I said, well, oh, wait, tell me about Vibes Cartel. He said, that song is singing this Vibes Cartel. You know, I want to pee myself now. I'm mad. <laughs> because I don't like what he stands for. I don't like what he portrays. I don't like... The person behind the music, but that song, Bad Fever, is bad. Period. A good song is a good song. And I never really heard the rest because he repulses me. The whole bleaching thing and I have girls killing themselves. I can't handle it. But at the same time, you can't deny a good tune. You can't. So no 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 local dancehall in impress you as yet. Well, let me say as yet, yes. Okay, hear me. Hear me out. Hear me out. I've been through a lot. So most of my life, I've clung to the, the, the kind of music that will help me out of that headspace. Whereas for some people, they would draw to that kind of music to get them out of the headspace. But then they'll go and dice up somebody or, or, or slap down somebody easy or the, the, the easier cuss somebody or something. But I am on Mona Melo scene now. People, everybody choose the music that will help them to deal with situations in their own way. So I've never really been drawn to it. But when I hear it, I'll be like, I can't help it. I can't help it. I heard one the other day. Shing, wing, wing, wing. Was that local? That's Jamaica. Thank you, Lord. So, <laughs> we, we shouldn't claim that. Right? So, that's what I'm saying. I don't really, I don't <laughs> lean to it, but I'm not being disrespectful to all. I'm not being disrespectful to all. Yeah, just saying. People cling to what helps them to heal faster. What about the soca artists? The right. soca music. So, what all they don't know about me is that I have no control over my ways. So I love my soca music. But this is this is no joke. I had one experience in Carnival, and that was in 2015. I was a blueberry in town for Juve. And then I quarrel all the way home because my foot was hurting man. But 2015 was one of the anti-s come up by because. Twenty twenty really took a lot from us. Twenty twenty one took a lot from us. This COVID situation took a lot from us. You see, not being able to see, but people jumping up and down, enjoying themselves. It might be a joyous time for some people. 
religion might say thank god no more carnival but that is probably a religion to them they found a height a sensitivity a point where they can reach to god in their own way but to me it looked so beautiful it felt beautiful you could feel the energy even if you're watching it from the tv and to not there's a shift and you can feel the shift no carnival it hurts you understand me a lot of people like oh so my, i was my sister for one you see she yes. is a carnival baby <laughs> she, right now she is she's in Tabanka, oh god man it, it hurts i didn't plan to i didn't plan to, i wasn't plan, because after i had one experience one experience but i i planning to look i have my popcorn ready i planning to look Turn on the TV, turn on the internet, whatever. Check out the um the the manch grat. Check out the um the competitions. What do you call it? Um, uh, soccer monarch and, and groovy monarch. And those are the things we look forward to around this time of the year. We can't, we can't, we can't. So it, it does hurt, you know. Um, because soccer is an institution, and people don't understand. They just tell us, ah, oh, they're just going in a studio and they're just playing a song or whatever, whatever. But each song is an ambassador by itself. We don't even understand. I remember in 2015, 2015 was the year for Soka. I don't care what nobody say. I just did like a boss. Come on. You had to get Marshall it, but that song was out of this world. And I can't remember the exact year when Bungie Garland did um, the Cody Sun now raising up. I can't remember that year in particular when that ended up on Grey's Anatomy. Come on. Soka is an institution. Right now people feeling it because even if, they, even if they make the music, they can't make back the money that they're spending to make the music. You understand me? It's hard. It is hard. Now they're going to try online something. We'll see how that works. Um, from what I heard, they're not having any online carnival. Um, Those second TV. Star had Second Sunday. And it shut down every day? They didn't shut it down, but I, um, I read that the commissioner is going to investigate the event. And okay. I could, I, 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 it is alleged that they are not having any online carnival, any online nothing. What do you think about that? Because I was online while I think Iowa George had something mm -hmm. showing Winchester mm -hmm. and thousands of people were viewing. So, from what I understand, Mr. Crookshank carried his camera phone into Queens Hall when he was not allowed to talk the videos slash pictures, posted it up and exposed second sunday or something so second sunday and that is the reason why it was exposed in the first place and you know to me i really think somebody should give our commissioner of police a medal and ask him to sit down listen i have no problem with us executing the cautions precautions to prevent us from getting sick right but if it is that it is at half capacity as it, they said it was. Then yeah, they followed all the regulations. And if all regulations were followed, where the investigation coming in now? Here, here I'm going to say, here I'm going to say. You want to investigate people money, fine. You do that, you shut it down, cool. That's what you know there. You want to investigate carnival to arrive. You do that wherever we're taking thing. Girls going missing in this country being murdered, bludgeoned, and ditched. I never once I hear this gentleman say once he's going to investigate it. Is it that he only investigates things that brings him popularity? I heard someone said once that he's a PR champion. The biggest zesser in this country. You understand me? Because is 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 who was the superstar that came in the country? Who you? Who you? You're going to investigate. But our young woman, nothing to investigate there. So what I have to think about that, I really think somebody should give Gigi a medal. Say, yay! Give him the attention, the five minutes of fame, whatever he wants. Because if he was serious about life, you would deal with the things that are serious about the people. Sit down. No virtual carnival, boy? 
for now it is alleged. Favorite vocalist. Favorite singer, favorite artist. That hard. That hard. Give me five. All right, I could do that. Starting with Anita Baker. Everybody know me. I'll, I'll, I'll. Anita Baker. I respect Luther bad. I respect him bad. Al Jeru, that style, unmatched. Um, God, boy, two more Nisha, you can't do this. Listen, eh, listen, listen, listen. I have a man who don't know he's my man. <laughs> right? I have a man who don't know he's my man. He's from, he's from Nigeria, Africa. I don't know if you ever heard of Burna Boy. Oluwa Bona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I had to put him on that list because, not just because of, you know, my little infatuation. I don't care what they say. I love him. But um, his lyrics, his content, and the intent of his music. Right. And I have to put on this list David Michael Rudder. Anytime I see that man, my whole body does just shut down. I got a scare, move, breathe, nothing. And it's not because I love him. I respect him. Bad. His music uh, shaped an era. And he did so with a striking force, but nobody couldn't point a finger at him. If you understand what I said. It's like how Rachel Price would say, when you're when you saying thing, you can't say it, but you had to question it. He did it with a, a kind of style, and nobody couldn't really blame him. But people listening, people understanding what was going on, you understand me? Other artists tried, but then, you know, they got the backlash. Like, little black boy, go to school. It was like, ah, oh, it's only black boy, you can't cheat. You understand what I'm saying? But when you hear David Brother put on a song, the first time you hear it, you're grooving, and now you're grooving, you're bubbling, ting, ting, ting. The second time you hear it, but wait, I pass me straight by. He hit Mother Heights, boy. David Michael Rudder. I love you bad. I love my Kess. I love my Marshall. I love everybody. But David Michael Rudder? <laughs> um, it have more. It have a lot more. That was it at least. Five is not enough. Ten is not enough. It's plenty because I love music. And I love the individuality. I love the message that everybody brings. I love that they share of themselves. And I love that they help others to open up to do the same. So I could say I love Mariah Carey for another reason. I could say with Newstead. I could say, I can't say Bobby Brown. I don't know. The, the, I, don't know how, I don't understand it. Before Bobby Brown thing didn't really. These days I'm growing to understand Nicki Minaj. I didn't understand her before. Right? Um, Chris Brown, he upset me when he, he interfered with Rihanna. But he too has some material that, some material that really struck me. Um, not talking about the hits or so the things that everybody hear. Um, when gospel artists are concerned, let me, let me tap into that because I just listen to that a lot. We have the Donny McClurkin, we have the Karen Clark shared, we have the Kiki shared, we have the Yolanda Adams. I have respect for Kim Burrell, but she needs to humble herself. So I have a long, long list. And these names would seem so far-fetched to you, but if you hear them sing, you might stop listening to secular. I promise you. Karen Clark shared have a song called Favor. When they listen to Favor, you want to know what favor is. You don't just want to know what the word favor is. You want to feel and experience favor from God. And then I like to listen to Sarah Tavares. Sarah Tavares as well. I have a long list, but um, I will leave it there. <laughs> I will leave it there. I have a long list, but I'll leave it there. Just now I love all music. I love all music, period. Chuck me too. Yes. Culture. The culture in this country is unique. It's being bruised it's right unique. now, though. It's unique, but we don't cherish it. It's being bruised right now, though. And we would need to pay attention to that. Definitely, we need to pay attention to that. For the children's sake. Nisha Guy. Yes, sir. Nisha Julia Guy. Julia A.K.A. Guy. Justice. Yes, I was given that name in singing. I really appreciate you for being on Punch in TV. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It was really Ooh. a pleasure speaking from your heart, and I'm really thankful. You're welcome. Thank I hope you we for can do me. this again because, Oops. you know, 
There's a lot so of things much happening. More, so much, so more. much more things happening yes. in the world that we could, you know, yes, always yes. speak about. So. Oh, yes. Like, like dump the Trump, but it's okay. Another day. So, <laughs> I just had to say that. I'm sorry. Until then. Until then. Peace and out. love. Peace and love.